Nyami Nyami was very, very strong. Had very, very strong, mysterious powers. Bigger functional powers than the smaller gods. Nyami Nyami was annoyed in a way, hence making that those floods so that the people you know, could, uh, could perish. There was a conflict. Nine people were killed as a result of that resistance that took place. Instead of calling it a disaster, they've made a ceremony out of it. As the water is flooding, people start moving to the highland. The, the significance of the Komboka really is just to come out of the water, wait for the water to recede so that you can go back. Cutting through the slopes of Zambia and Zimbabwe in the southern part of Africa, the roaring waters of the mighty Zambezi River clearly marks the borderline between these two countries. But underneath its mighty gust lies a mystical creature that is revered by the Lozi and Tonga communities, the Nyami Nyami. Nyami Nyami, the river god, is a snake-like dragon, but with a fish's head. Believed to inhabit the waters of the Zambezi, this mysterious deity has an equal share of love and hate for the people who live around its channel. But who or what really is Nyami Nyami? This uh, river god, Nyami Nyami, really existed in that river and uh, it helped them in terms of food. They would get uh, parts of it, and that's why it's actually called Nyami Nyami. It's, uh, it's Nyama Nyama, to piece, pieces of meat. Uh, so you'd go there, when they say, oh, there is a, it has exposed itself, go and get Nyama. Uh, then they would rush there and cut pieces of it. And then after, when it was satisfied that people had gotten enough, it would disappear. Nyami Nyami tended to have bigger functional powers than the smaller gods. Very, very respected, had very, very strong, mysterious powers. Well, when we were growing up, really, Nyami Nyami was known to be some, somebody mythical, you know, some, something, somebody who was not neither a human being nor a an ordinary creature. It was a combination of a fish here or, or some, some, some kind of a, a, a snake or partly you know, yeah. with features of a human being or something like that. First of all, nobody really knew exactly what the face of Nyamiami looked like. Our visit to the Lozi and Tonga communities of Zambia attempts to shed some light on this powerful but very elusive mystic. The tale of Nyami Nyami has been told for many generations. For 91-year-old farmer Jabula Kangwenda, telling its story is special because he is one of the people who claim to have seen Nyami Nyami in the flesh. The Nyami Nyami is no ordinary god to the Lozi and Tonga people. He is said to have powers that have protected the people living in the Zambezi Plains for generations. 
Fanuel Simamba has lived along the Zambezi River all his life. As a member of the Bagande royal clan of Tonga, he has witnessed firsthand how the spirit of Nyami Nyami has always lingered in the region. A nation without culture is a dead nation. We all trace our origins from a different cultural backgrounds. So as a clan, we assumed we had a, a, a traditional God, Nyami Nyami. Because Nyami Nyami was very, very strong. We used to go there, pray for rains, and after praying, you would actually see a small cloud and rains would come. We used to go there to ask for peace, no diseases, for life, for protection. He would be consulted. A modern-day teacher of local history, Fanuel claims that the presence of Nyami Nyami is felt all across the region. But being almighty, it does not easily show itself to people. It was difficult for you to see Nyami Nyami. If you are like, you see it come, you never see the face, you only see the part of the, the shoulder here, and it goes, just like the hippo behaves in water. However, from time to time, there have been several sighting claims of the famous Nyami Nyami inside the waters of the Zambezi River. There was that time where when they said, no, we have seen Nyami Nyami, what have you? People from around here flocked to the, the dam wall to come and see the popular Nyami Nyami. So we also came here. It was one of the biggest crocodiles. It was just outside the water. Very, very big. And it stayed there for one week without going into war. Into, that was in 1972. So people thought that was the Nyami Nyami. I think that was not in Nyami Nyami. I like the story which is behind it. Uh, when we moved here, my wife says, oh, there's a crocodile on the lake. And I looked and it was a snake-like movement, very fast and very big. For some time it ran and then it stopped. I watched it as a few times and it was too big for a, for a crocodile. So it looked like it would have been a, a big uh, serpent. I found out what it was actually. It was a whirlwind. The whirlwind comes from land, hits the water, and then there's no dust because it's... But you can see the movement on the water, and when the whirlwind stops, the water is like boiling, and then it's finished. There's an assumption that if some people, if you saw it, you became sick. Nyami Nyami is said to have a wife called Kitapo. Through descriptions from those who have seen her, she is believed to be a mermaid-like creature. But unlike Nyami Nyami, she is known to reveal herself from time to time. Ngalale, who has a failing eyesight, claims to have seen Nyami Nyami's wife, Kitapo. According to him, Kitapo used to bask on a rock by a whirlpool along the Zambezi River. No <laughs> As a protector of its people, Nyami Nyami is believed to watch over anyone who enters the river. Richard, a curio shop owner, believes that the Nyami Nyami ornaments he sells have divine powers that protect anyone wearing it while on the river. We call it the symbol of the mighty Victoria Falls, the Nyami Nyami. As you can see, the way it is like this, it has got the eye 
and these stripes and these which go like this the bow the hole here and we have got the small hole on top here and we have got also the mouth this side so we say the eye represent you are lucky to see the falls in your lifetime because there are so many people around the world who want to see the falls unfortunately they don't make it and these lines these are the one which say it symbolizes the falls especially when you are crossing by the knife bridge there you are able to feel the water and these which go like this these we call them the big whips of Zambezi river the mystery of nyami nyami is not only a revere of the older generation chief simamba the 11th chief of the bagande royal clan of tonga is keeping the spirit of nyami nyami alive tradition will always be there people they don't want to believe in tradition especially this younger generation like his fathers before him, Chief Simamba's role is to ensure that the people of Tonga continue to worship Nyami Nyami as the guardian of the Zambezi River. The chiefs are the uh, custodians of the traditions. We don't want the tradition to die. Encouraged by efforts of Chief Simamba to maintain traditional culture, Gerald, a sculptor, is doing just that. As a young man, Gerald believes that by making Nyami Nyami sculptures, he is doing his share in preserving the heritage of the Lozi and Tonga people. I would like the Nyami Nyami art to continue because uh, we want also the new generation to know about the Nyami Nyami and to know it, how it looked like. And if the new generation know, uh, knows about this, then the other generation also you know, will be updated with it. Then the story will continue like that. Just like the Greek god Poseidon and the Roman god Neptune, Nyami Nyami is Zambia's own god of the waters. Although Nyami Nyami lives in the Zambezi River, there are several shrines inland that are used to worship him. The village here is one of the villages that has a shrine that is related to the main shrine for the Bagande uh, clan. This baobab tree is an example of a Nyami Nyami shrine. There are two big baobab trees where uh, people used to consult and still consult the rains. And when we are approaching uh, uh, December, before the main ceremony at the chief's palace, that tradition is to come and push the stick into the hole, maybe three times. And the sound or the noise that comes from there will tell us whether rains will be good or rains will not be good. In 1956, construction of what would be the largest dam in the world by storage capacity, the Kariba Dam, started. Jabula was one of the few locals who were employed by the construction company to work as casual laborers. <laughs> It is during this construction that Nyami Nyami's true power came to be seen. Before the construction of the Kariba Dam, the colonial government at that time, the British colonial government, did a lot of sensitization to ask people to move away uh, so that, you know, they would pave way to uh, this construction, which was going to benefit the, the country. If we did not move away, it means we would have perished. Some people felt that, you know, it was the white man who really wanted to grab our land for his own uh, use. 
it didn't have any benefit for any one of us. They provided transport, uh, the government, to, to ferry people, ferry our animals to, uh, to inland where we were hipped. And after that, we started scattering now to build, to start our, our villages. We were moved to very dry lands, very rocky areas, very infertile land. And as a result, there was a lot of resistance when this decision finally was, um, was effected. Uh, Chief Chipepo did resist because they didn't want to leave uh, the, 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 the area because of the, of the alluvial soils that were always fertile. When the water started swell, swelling backwards, some people, some communities like in Chipepo for instance, refused to move to give way to the swelling of the water because they felt very genuinely that the white man was using that as a trick to take away their land, which they didn't want to abandon. There was a conflict. Nine people were killed as a result of that resistance that took place. So we lost quite a lot. We lost our animals, we lost our, the culture, our, our shrines, our cemeteries because of this construction. This construction angered Nyami Nyami, not only because his people had been resettled, but also since the builders had separated him from his wife Kitapo, who was now on the lower side of the dam. As a show of might, he decided to unleash his wrath on the builders. Even every theoretical cause of flood seems to have coincided to send the Zambezi stark, staring man. Never, probably, for 10,000 years. For the first time in recorded history, a cyclone raged over the landlocked country in 1957. When the storm cleared, the river had seen over seven times its normal capacity. The flood swept away the dam walls and also left several of the construction workers dead. The construction had provoked in Yamiyami and water at that time became very, very strong. Water was going round and because of that, the walls collapsed. After the devastating destruction of the dam walls, the contractors sought intervention from the elders by offering sacrifices to Nyami Nyami so that he would let the construction continue. Now when the walls uh, collapsed, the white consultants or contractors were advised that the site where the bridge was going to be and the dam was going to be was a sacred place where Nyami Nyami used to live. The elders were consulted and they were advised that they needed to go to that site again with some material uh, gift to give to Nyami Nyami and make an apology that uh, they were not aware this place was a sacred place. And uh, after the elders conducted their rituals. I think a few days passed. It was calm. Water went to its normal flowing. And from the Second War, there were no such incidences of the wars giving problems here and there. And uh, today, we have this beautiful construction. For a man who has embraced modernity, Ambassador Frederick is skeptical about the existence of Nyami Nyami. When the, the white man tried to construct that dam, they constructed it in such a way that um, it was not able to resist the uh, pressure of the water from up, uh, upstream, and it collapsed. The very first time they made an attempt, that was 1957, it collapsed.
but all of us believed earnestly that it collapsed because Nyaminyami did not want them to build the dam there. We didn't realize that it was just the, um, the technology that had failed the project. We believed earnestly that it was Nyaminyami who didn't want any disturbance where he lived. So later on when um, the Italians came, they built it in a concave manner, you know, so that at least, you know, the pressure of the water did not easily push it downstream. And as you can see, it has withstood the pressure of the water of the, of the Zambezi from 1958 when it was uh, finally concluded up to this moment. Although there is talk now that it's beginning to develop some cracks and what have you, but we are hoping that, you know, nobody will believe that it's Nyam Nyam who is, who is at it. We believe that uh, if something happened to it, it would be just uh, the failure of the technology. But for Chief Simamba, Nyami Nyami's powers are still being felt to date. Nyami Nyami is still trying to find a way to reunite with his wife Kitapo, but the concrete walls of the Kariba Dam are keeping them apart. During the time of the construction of the dam, the female had gone out down the lower stream to visit other areas that side. The male one was left behind. Up to now, they are still separated. Hence, the problem we have at times, we have a tremor. When they are trying to come and meet, meet each other, then we find that there is a tremor which happens once in a while. Beyond the myth of Nyami Nyami, the Lozi and Tonga people have other cultural rituals that revolve around the Zambezi River. We had our own cultural ceremonies. For example, there's a big cultural ceremony known as Windi of the Bagande clan. There's also Kulamba Gualo, there's also Kuomboka, okay? The Kuomboka is an annual festival held to commemorate the migration to higher grounds from the flooding in the lower Zambezi plains. While there are conflicting reports on the cause of the flood, Chief Simamba believes that Nyami Nyami is the reason behind it. I want to believe that maybe uh, Nyami Nyami was annoyed in a way, hence making that those floods so that the people you know, could, uh, could perish because they don't believe in him now. We have had the poor rainfall, the, the, the levels of water go down. I don't know whether it's, these are still uh, powers of Nyami Nyami, why the water levels are going down, why the rains are not doing well, very well, but I believe it's God. So this is President Obama, Mrs. Obama, this is... Inonge Mbikusita is a member of the famous Lewanika royal family from Zambia. She has participated in several Kuomboka festivals and has studied the culture behind it for years. And this was the king of Belgium. The Kuomboka means coming out of the water. Instead of calling it a disaster, they've made a ceremony out of it. As the water is flooding, people start moving to the highland. So basically, the significance of the Koboka really is just to come out of the water, wait for the water to recede so that you can go back. Being a social affair, the Kuomboka festival follows a strict hierarchy of social status within the community. When the royal drums sound, all the men start leaving their villages. You just hear and you start. And as you are passing a village, people know you are going to move the king. They give you food, they give you refreshment, you know, and it's a joy for all the men start coming to move the king to paddle. The festival brings revenue to the people of Zambezi Plains through tourism. Each year, after the start of the rainy season, tourists flock the region to be part of this amazing spectacle. 
whenever tourists, even come here, international tourists, they would age them to say, if you need protection and you're going into the waterfall, you need to wear a necklace of a nyami nyami because you protect you. It's because they believe that this is their board of their God. There's a mystery behind this that human mind cannot comprehend. And so to be protected, you need the nyami nyami to protect you. As they journey towards higher ground, many are always on the lookout for a possible sighting of Nyami Nyami, their protector. However, not everyone believes in the existence of Nyami Nyami. Basically, I don't believe in the Nyami Nyami. I just hear stories, no, the Nyami Nyami, it was just by the bank of the river of the Zambezi, but I've never seen the Nyami Nyami. So. As, it, as to me, it's, they're just stories because I, I've never seen it, yes. Well, for me, as an anthropologist, I would want to see a person who would tell me who exactly have ever seen Nyami Nyami, the river god. My belief is that the Nyami Nyami as the river god is a situation where people must have been looking at it as a belief system. After the completion of the Kariba Dam, Nyami Nyami disappeared into oblivion. Jabula believes that it is because of Nyami Nyami's disappearance that they have not been able to benefit from the dam construction. <laughs> We have never enjoyed the benefits of this lake because we were promised water was going to fall us. We were going to have schools. The white man wanted education because education is power. Education is development. We were promised health centers. We were promised good roads. We were moved to very dry lands, very rocky areas, very infertile land, no water, making us now suffer. The intention of creating this dam was not bad. The motive, the objective was not a bad one. It meant to bring about development to this community. We were promised those things, but at the time, you know, they didn't make any sense because um, the elders did not really believe in electricity because they had not seen electricity. They didn't know what electricity was all about. But the colonialists said, well, that electricity was going to bring about development, you know, in our lives and so forth. Today, yes, we are beginning to see the fruits because electricity is not only helping this area, it's not only opening up Siavonga or Southern Province where the Zambezi River is passing through. It's helping the whole country. I think what we should do, there is a section in our social studies and the history. They talk about Nyami Nyami and so forth. The generation now should impart that knowledge into the young ones so that they don't forget uh, about what, uh, what Nyami Nyami was. Even though some have shunned the presence of Nyami Nyami, a few are still holding on to his mysterious heritage that once watched over the region. Whether or not Nyami Nyami comes back to claim his ultimate status as a god of the Zambezi River is only up to the future to tell.